They are participating with Jesus in the powers of the age to come was through this means. The gospel is the power of God to salvation. We learnt in former videos that we are in partnership with the Father, the Son and the Holy Ghost. Partnership. Partnership is association, a partner association of joint interest. It means one associated with another, especially in an action. That's our position with the Father, the Son and the Holy Ghost. We're so associated with the Father that there is an action by the Father and in and by us. We are so associated with the Son that there is a specific action on His part in us and in and by us also. We are so associated with the Holy Spirit that there is specifically an action or certain actions by Him in us by which we act also. John tells us wonderful words. He says, Behold, what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. Now I'm quoting the King James Version for the simple reason that's the only version I may remember because I was read on it and read it well, probably 30 to 40 years so that's what I remember sadly but gratefully and thankfully I got the Word of God in my heart they used to sing that in my childhood. Behold what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. You and I are sons of God. That means he's our Father. We have a Heavenly Father. We should be grateful to our Heavenly Father. We must thank and worship our Heavenly Father. We must have a partnership in operation with our Heavenly Father. Doubtless we have a, a partnership. But we could ask ourselves, is it always operative? Are we always acting as a partner of the Father in fellowship with the Father? And John goes on to say, it does not yet appear what we shall be like. But when he appears, we shall be like him. For we shall see him as he is. Mistakenly, most of us think, oh, that's Jesus. No. He's not talking about the appearance of Jesus to come and take us to heaven. He's talking about an appearance to us of the Father when we get to heaven and when the Lord Jesus takes us up to where the Father is to be with the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit forever and ever in heaven we shall behold the Father in his glory how will it be possible that we can then look at the Father in his glory because on the way up, on the way up to heaven, we have transformed bodies and we have been glorified with the glory that is in the bodies of Jesus. We will be glorified. We will be full of glory. So when we arrive in heaven with Jesus, we will have immortal bodies full of glory like his is in heaven now full of glory the immortal resurrected body of Jesus that clothes him in heaven 
is full of glory and ours will be full of glory. So because our new bodies will be full of glory, we ourselves are full of glory. We will be in a state of glory. And because the Father, from everlasting to everlasting, is glory and in glory and full of glory, we will be able to see him. And then we'll be like him. We will be like him in a further way. On the way up into heaven, we're like Jesus in his body of glory. But then we see the Father. We will resemble the Father. That's what it means. Already in us is the image of God. Did you know that? We are born of God. We were created in him before the foundation of the world. But when we were born again, we were born of God. Already now, in our justification that has been granted us, and the sanctification that has been granted us, inside of us, in our spirits, we are the blameless sons of God. Blameless. Because we have been born of God and as John says, the very nature of God is in our spirits. That's why our spirits cannot sin. Because God is formed in us, his nature, in effect, is formed in us. The image of God is in us. The holiness of God is in us. Not that holiness that call, calls out the worship of his saints, but the holiness that sets us apart from sin, the world, Satan, the devil, and everything to do with our carnal nature and everything to do with this body that is now our tent. Inside of us is a new creation. We have been created inside of us after God or in the likeness of God who has put within us the ability to do good works of holiness from our spirit. It says so in Ephesians. He has created us after holiness and godliness. So as he is, so are we in this world in that respect. Now when we say as he is, we're talking about the whole being of God. When we say as we are, when I'm talking about our whole beings, which is mistakenly thought so by some. I've heard Joseph Prince. As he is, so am I in this world. Yes. As he is in his nature of holiness, so am I in this world only in my spirit, not in my body. It's capable of sin and does sin not in my soul or my carnal nature. I am not as he is, but as he is, so am I in my spirit and so are you in your spirit. You resemble God in your spirit. It says, now are we the sons of God. Now, just think about it. You're a son of your heavenly father. If you're a son of your heavenly father, we need to know the Father. We know Jesus in a measure. Many of us are more concentrating on the Holy Ghost. No, it's Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost does not bring salvation. God, the Father, is the one who brought salvation through the Lord Jesus Christ. 
we have to honour the Father. We have to recognise the Father. Because we are not like the people of the world. And that's why the worldly people don't recognise or know us. No worldly person really knows us as we really are. Because deep down inside, in our spirits, we are a child of our Heavenly Father. The world does not know God the Father. They have no understanding of God the Father. They have no communication with God the Father. So how can they communicate spiritually with you and me? They cannot. How can we be so associated with them in any avenue of life as to become, as it were, bosom pals. You know what I'm trying to say. Of course we associate with ordinary people. We're with them. Let's understand that they're not ordinary. They are only ordinary people. We are not ordinary people. We are the children of our Heavenly Father. They are not. They are of their children, the devil. They are the children of the, their father, the devil. As we were before we knew Jesus Christ. Now right now, because we have been born again in our spirits, we partake of the powers of the age to come. Who holds the powers of the age, of, age to come in his hands? The father, not the son not the Holy Spirit. We participate in the power of the age to come through salvation through the Lord Jesus Christ the Son. So in that way we have fellowship and partnership with the Son. Just think what happened when we were born again according to the scriptures of which we did not understand at the time and most do not understand, even to this day, and the preachers don't, or they would be preaching it all the time. I don't preach it all the time. I should preach it more. So when we say anything that doesn't hold somebody up in a 100% pure life, we're just the same, aren't we? I'm talking about believers. We participated of the powers of the age, of, age to come when we were filled with the Holy Ghost. Now participating with Jesus in the powers of the age to come was through this means. The gospel is the power of God to salvation to everyone who believes. It does say to the Judahite or the Israelite first and then the Gentile. So in that respect, we have partnership with Jesus because salvation comes through Jesus by receiving Jesus, by calling on the name of Jesus, the Son. God so loved us, the Father so loved us before we were naturally born. He so loved us that he gave his Son to be our salvation. It all goes back to the Father. Now when you talk about Father, Son and Holy Spirit in eternity, as we are in time and as we will be forever and ever, there is no human way that we can philosophize or indulge in making a creed to describe the Father, the Son and the Holy Ghost. The mystery is so great that no human being could ever understand. That what is what was said in the New Testament. Great is the mystery of godliness, of God. Great is the mystery of godliness. A mystery that is not divulged. There is not one person living who could sit down and write a book that would encompass the reality and truth. 
concerning the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. As Paul said at the end of a chapter, Romans 11, He is so great is our God and Father that we cannot track anything he does. We can never lead it to its source. We can never understand it. So great is the Father and so great is the Son and so great is the Holy Spirit. Therein lies the great mystery. So we partake and become partners with the Father after we have become born again, after we have been sealed with the Holy Spirit speaking in other tongues, then we really have the capacity to be partners with the Father in the power that comes through the operation of the Holy Spirit. We are to participate in his power and it's the power of the age to come. And so how do we participate? We participate through the dunamis, the miracle that happened to us when we were filled with the Holy Ghost which is speaking in tongues. It's miraculous. So miraculous that the Apostle Paul spent most of his time jabbering, yammering away in other tongues day and night more than anybody else. That's how wonderful it is to pray in other tongues. And when we're doing that, we're participating in the power of the Father in eternity, in the power of the Son in eternity, because he gave it, and in the power of the Holy Spirit in eternity, through whom all three, through all three, was the world created. The Father created the world, the Son created the world, but he was not the Son. He was never the Son of God in the Old Testament. He only became the Son of God when he was born here on earth. He was equal with his Father, but he had a special place, as we read in the book of 1 Enoch, where he was the elect and called the Son of Man because of what he was going to be when he came to earth. He wasn't the Son of Man in heaven. He was worshipped, as was the Father, as was the Holy Spirit. The Father received the name Father when he begat the Son, when he gave conception through the action of the Holy Spirit on Mary to having a created body formed in Mary for the Word of God in heaven who was made flesh, the Logos, who said when he left heaven and went into the womb of Mary, Behold, I come. In the volume of the book it is written of me, I come to do your will, O oh my God. He was speaking as the created body housing the divine word or logos and housing God manifest in the flesh. God manifest in the flesh was in the womb of Mary, the Godhead. Now therein lies a mystery which we have preached about before. So we are to have, be partners with the Father in engaging in prayer of the powers of the age to come, of the Holy Spirit and of the Son. Dunamis, praying in other tongues, and the word comes to us. He is exceedingly able to do greater than you could ever ask or think according to the dunamis, according to the speaking in tongues that you do, wherein you're having partnership 
or action with the Father because the Father is listening to what the Holy Spirit is saying through you. The Father is listening to what your spirit is saying in the powers of the age to come. And Jesus himself is there as Christ in you to put hopes and prayers along with the Holy Spirit that you will pray that will ascend to the Father who will hear and see and answer because it will be according to the will of the Father. So when we're praying in other tongues the Father is greatly involved. It's not just our immediate revelation or understanding. The Father is involved. We're coming to the Father. We're in the throne room of God in heaven as it were. We are having communion or fellowship with the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. Now the Father is the Father of lights. The Father of lights. In which there is no change of turning. Nothing to do with the sun and the moon and the stars as most people think. Because it says he is the Father of lights and every good gift Every perfect gift cometh from above. Every good gift, natural and spiritual, comes from heaven, from the Father of lights. Now you think of the good gifts. Do they come to us through the sun and the moon and the stars? Do they have anything to do with it? He's not the Father of lights up there. He, he's the creator of those lights. He's not their father. He's our father because he created us in our spirits, in a new creation. So we are lights. Let your light so shine before him. You are like a city of lights. You are a light on the hill. We came to Jesus who said, I am the light of the world. Not the sun, not the moon, not the stars. He's our Father because we're lights. He's our Father because the light of the glory of God has shone in our hearts. He's our Father because Christ our light is in us. He is our Father of lights. He is also the Father of spirits, as, as is said in the New Testament, you are chastened by your natural fathers, or were. How much more will you be chastened by the father of spirits and live, and, though li and thus live? Our natural fathers, or mothers, parents, mostly it's the mother, our natural parents chastened us or are supposed to. Our Heavenly Father chases us because he's father of our spirits. Our, heavenly, our earthly parents were parents of our body, soul and spirit, but created by God. Our Heavenly Father is the father of us, our spirits our Father. No wonder we should think, Father, I adore you, falling down before you. Endless praises singing. Glory, glories ringing. Now this is what is said. This is the command for every one of us. This is the commandment that you believe on the name of the Son of God and love one another. Because God, our Father, is love. To us, he is love. God is love. It's what we teach our children 
in their childhood. God is love. But that doesn't really sink into us. Now, if we are spirits, and he is our father, which is true, if we are the light, and he is the father, which is true, isn't it wonderful to be able to look at him and say, Father, I worship you, I glorify you, I magnify you. Now that is excluding the subject of the mediatorship of the Lord Jesus Christ, which is a different subject. You see, when we have all these doctrines of the New Testament, they all have to fit in, like a mosaic or like a brick wall, brick upon brick upon brick, till you have the whole of the wall. And we are like that in our understanding of the things of God, of the things of the Father, of the things of the Son, and of the things of the Holy Spirit. Amen. He so loved us that he gave his Son to be our salvation. It all goes back to the Father. That was...